Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and today I want to chat with you guys a little bit about why the decline bench press is an overrated exercise. Something I said I would do earlier because it was kind of a side tangent in an earlier video. So uh, let me put on my plus five out of weapon spinning. We're going to skill up my crafting a little bit and let's talk about this. All right, uh, when I say overrated, that doesn't mean it's a bad exercise because you know when you say that and say it's an overrated exercise, you will always get people who come in and say, well, well I did it and I got good results doing it. Uh, I think it's a good exercise, and I, I guess that's kind of the point. No, I'm not saying it's not a, a decent exercise. I'm not saying you can't make gains doing it. I'm saying that it is extremely overrated. And what I mean is that it's overrated in the sense that there is literally nothing that the decline bench press does that the normal flat bench press on a flat bench can't do equally well, if not better. That's what I mean by overrated. And some people feel that the bench press is an overrated exercise. So if you have an actual exercise that people actually debate whether it's overrated or not, and it's clearly superior or equal in, in every single way to the exercise we're talking about, then, you know, again, we're talking about a very overrated exercise at that point. And, and here's what I mean. You know, how many people out there will actually say, oh, those guys are doing that big arch on the bench press. That powerlifter is using a big arch on the bench press so he can cut the range of motion down and make it easier. Isn't that the same thing as a decline bench? It is the exact same movement pattern. Getting a big arch so that you can cut four, five, six inches out of the range of motion on a bench press, and you know, you do this, that is a decline bench. It is the exact same bar path and range of motion. There is no difference. That is the exact same movement. Here's the difference. If you do a big arch on the flat bench, what happens? You can use a less complicated, cheaper piece of equipment. You can use a flat bench. Easier to get in and out of and safer and cheaper. And it's safer. You have less chance of getting hurt on the flat bench than you do the decline. Because what happens if you miss it on the decline? You can't do the roll of shame. You can't throw it on the floor in front of you. The bar is the only place to go if someone doesn't help you. is towards your neck. So it is essentially replicating a really, really big arch on a flat bench, but in a more dangerous manner using a more complicated piece of equipment. That alone makes it overrated. Now, a lot of people will say, well, you know, what about the, the angle and everything? Well, you can get that angle because some people will argue that the flat bench due to the alignment of fibers isn't as good as, say, a shallow decline or a shallow incline for working the chest. That is a point of argument I'm not sure that I agree with, but that is a contention out there by some people who, who have talked quite a bit about physiology and everything else on YouTube. Uh, in the past, it's not something I've heard mentioned in years, but it was something a few years ago people were talking about. But just learning to arch a little bit instead of being flat back on the flat bench will do the exact same thing. But ultimately, the decline is just a partial. You're just cutting range of motion out so that you can lift more weight. All right? That's all it does. And it's cutting range of motion from the hardest part of the movement that puts that deeper stretch on the pectorals. So technically, while you can use more weight, it's less tension on your pecs. It is less tension on your pecs. So people have these ideas, oh, because it's a lower angle, it must work the lower pec better. No, it works the pecs less. You have to use more weight to even get close to the same amount of pec recruitment because you're removing a lot of the stretch. You're removing the range of motion. You're removing the, the range of motion where it's hardest and has, creates the most mechanical stress on the pectorals. So you're removing that. It's just an easier version of the exercise. It's an easier version. Uh, and, and again, you need a, a decline bench to actually do it. You need a more specialized piece of equipment just so that you can do this. And, uh, and that's the funny thing. You know, you'll get people will say, well, that's only true when you're talking about a barbell. If you do a dumbbell decline, there isn't that same risk of injury because the bar can't hit your neck and you aren't limited by chest, it is no longer a partial. So what about the dumbbells? But we kind of come back at that point, in what world can dumbbells match the barbell? You know, we can argue a lot about dumbbell presses, but ultimately you do waste a lot of energy stabilizing. There is a certain degree of, of risk of, of actually pec tears and rotator cuff injuries are pretty high on heavy dumbbells. Uh, so you're getting into a situation where to try to use a heavy, a really heavy weight, it can be awkward and puts you just as predisposed to injury, getting into position, and the same thing getting into the decline. You're doing all this stuff hoping to get that deeper stretch, right? 
So you want to take an exercise at the angle, all it really does is create a partial, but then use a dumbbell or something so you can get a deeper stretch or remove the partial aspect. And it's like, well, what are you really gaining from that? What are you really gaining from that? Uh, you are having to use less weight, and there is that that chance of injury because, again, having to stabilize these big, heavy dumbbells, especially when they start getting real big and heavy, heavy enough that they actually are challenging enough to give someone who's built a base uh, any sort of real stimulation, you know, you start putting yourself into these compromised positions. And then we get back to the point of, is it really worth it? I mean, is it is it really worth it when you think about it from that perspective? And I'm going to say, no, I don't think it is because we have other options. You know, that's the other point. People will bring up, well, the dumbbell is totally different from the barbell. But you need to keep in mind how many people think the barbell is great. And they really think it's some different angle that works the muscle better. No, it's an inferior training stimulus to the flat. It really is. Uh, so we get into this point of dumbbells, but it's like, why would you need dumbbells? We have other things that are even easier to do and safer that can, re can get even more overload. Uh, how about a weighted dip? I would say any purpose in which you think that a flat or a decline dumbbell bench press would benefit you. And again, you know what it is? It's that deeper stretch, trying to get more muscle involvement. A weighted dip does that. A weighted dip does that better. It does it safer, still needs less equipment. Because all you need is some dipping bars and a belt and some plates. That is still less sophisticated, easier equipment and still easier and safer. Even though the decline carries some risk, it's still safer uh, to do the weighted dips than it is to try to get into position on a decline dumbbell. Furthermore, the weighted dip is an overall better training stimulus because it moves the body through space. Uh, it does bring additional stabilizers and other stuff in that don't get worked while still allowing a very large amount of weight to be used. In fact, most people are stronger on weighted dips than they are the bench press. When you start looking at the weight they're moving, their body weight plus the plates, oftentimes people's one rep max on a flat bench, they can do four or five reps with it very frequently on weighted dips when you start factoring in the body weight plus the plates, um, what their actual weight being moved is because that is comparable. You have to factor it in because the bench your body doesn't move. It's not part of the equation, but it is on the dip. Uh, you start finding they, they can actually get a lot of overload through a longer range of motion still and get that deep stretch reflex. So you can get all of that stuff from a dip. So even if people can argue that the decline dumbbell can do this or that, the weighted dip does it better. The weighted dip does it better. So here's the, the question we have to ask when we look at things like uh, the decline pressing of what does it actually bring to the table that other exercises don't do better and safer? It doesn't bring anything. It doesn't bring anything to the table. For the barbell, it's just a big arch. All right, well, you can do that on a flat bench. You just have to arch. And you can control the degree of arch. So the decline bench are usually set with specific angles. And if they're adjustable, it gets really, really uh, annoying and complicated. And it's, most of them are set so much. So like for me personally, uh, most declines I've ever done, it actually comes down here to my stomach. And it's just, it's like a half rep. It's half a rep on a bench press. And yeah, you can easily do 50, 60 more pounds because you're putting less tension on the pecs. So you need less tension because of the different joint angles. Uh, so the muscle can move more weight while doing less work. So it's not really uh, beneficial in that regard, the fact you can do more weight and you're stuck at these fixed angles instead of saying, okay, well, if I do want to change this up a bit, you can control the amount of arch that you do on a bench press. And for most people, they really wouldn't want to go as extreme as you do on a decline bench with that unless you were trying to hit a max in a competition. Like that's not the best way to build strength. And people need to remember that. When we're talking about training, we're talking about building strength, not demonstrating it. You do tricks to let you lift more weight by doing less work when you want to actually display a lift in a competitive environment. So displaying strength is not the same as building strength. Building strength, you often does want to do stuff the harder way. You do want to actually make the muscles work harder. And oftentimes that entails longer ranges of motion. So you might be forced to use less weight because the muscles are put at more mechanical dis disadvantaged positions and they just can't move quite as much weight, but they get worked harder. You know, and that work is what builds strength. So the, the argument there is that it's not even necessarily beneficial for that. Then you hop over to the dumbbell thing and it's like weighted dips do everything that you would possibly want to do with a dumbbell decline, but they do it with less equipment, 
better overall training stimulus and it's a bit safer. Even though it carries its own degree of risk, it's still safer overall. It's still safer. You're still going to have less risk of a pec tear and something going wrong like that. Uh, so when you look at any variation of the decline that people have, there are slightly more conventional exercises that are better training stimulus, safer, have more versatility, or easier to set up to do everything it could do equal to or better. So again, come back to the point. I'm not saying that the decline is a, is a terrible exercise. I'm saying that it's very, very overrated. And for all the reasons you would ever use one, there are other exercises that are superior that are just common normal exercises. Uh, so just food for thought. All right, guys, well, that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.